here goes Marion Munchies taking off. I wondered what was wrong with me. Uh, lovely weather. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting for sure. Alright guys, so today I've taken my, um, my drift car to Watercross. And well, it should be interesting. Quick run through if you never see this car before. is a basic build. Um, coilovers, well the diff, gearbox, single cam RB20, um, positive rear alignment, um, negative front alignment, you know, pretty basic, I know a lot of you mightn't consider this, you know, a drift car, but is, um, is what I use to learn to drift with, so to me it's very much a drift car and uh, with the weld the diff etc it should be interesting out there and you wet so right now we're going to go out on the on the truck hopefully she don't treat me too bad but you know you know it is where you drive plus wet plus asphalt equals magic you know but anyways you know let's see how my rear wheel drive um, drift car will do in a grip settings and as you will point of this video to, to test the limits of the car and push it to the max to see how connected I can get with this car to fast track how well I am with this car actually all right so we're going to be walking the course and I might flip flops my flippy flops <laughs> and this weather is lovely but say no more we shall succeed <laughs> alright so this is the starting gate here huh, this blue cone was the was the finishing zone for the last drift event funny how that's still there <laughs> anyways uh, it's important to to come early and walk the course has helped you a lot as a big first step in terms of doing a fast time doing the course you know on foot before you actually you know actually start to drive it so it's, it's a pretty straightforward track so to make things interesting you know we get a little jizzle so should be fun with my but with my nsd no slip diff you know should be pretty interesting. Another shalom here. You can choose whichever way you want to go around the cones, whether it be left or right. But you have to go in, out, in, out. I'd say um, the best setup is to find a way to come through the shalom so that when you exit, you go around the left side of this cone. So you'll be perfectly set up for this gate here on the left hand side. Rather than going right around the cone and then having to pull in and then pull back out. I know, I know, I can't like, I miss this. Holy oh, shit. Nah, not for the gram. <laughs> this man living in 2030, yes? And it's gonna be problematic because you see in this big puddle of water here. Which makes things really interesting. A lot. So, the best thing to do is to be uh, keep as close to this pool as possible. So, at all. You know, you save two, your two inside wheels and your two outside wheels will probably touch the water. Right, so from all here, I'm going to be coming outside, cutting it real close to this cone here. So just shoot straight at that cone there, you know. 
and then you might want to go a little bit wide on after you pass this gate and pull in on the gate afterwards so that's how you don't really um slingshot wide so where they are, where they are right now the two black <laughs> the two black t-shirts where they are right they want to come straight come kind of here because the gate ahead of this is a little bit tight on the left so you want to kind of come out and then pull back in because if you go too tight on the inside here you'll end up slingshotting you know because at the floor of the track you'll end up slingshotting right and then you'll miss this left gate or you wouldn't miss it but it will kind of slow you down you'll have to slow down to catch it so you want to come a little bit wide and pull in and not hit this this cone here but hit the um the curb and apex the curb and there and then you can possibly try the apex this cone and then hit that gate but what will happen is you'll be um you'll slingshot left right because you'll be apex in here so you'll slingshot left and you'll miss that right all right focus all right that that right point of cone so you had to kind of come wide here still Right, so you come wide here and then you cut in so you real clip this cone clip this cone this way bam and then you pull pull back around that cone there straight forward but you know these little mental cues that you just keep in your head while you're going through the courses help you shave time gradually as you as you progress throughout the day. Wow, boy, I fatigue already. Wow, that's interesting. And it looks as if it's a stopping box. So basically what that means is you have to stop. If you don't stop, you'll be penalized. So you have to stop. You can't touch those furthest two codes there. So you have to stop within the box in order to um, not be penalized. And yeah, that's it for this, um, walk through you know it's setting up the time and stuff so the people will be able to watch on time from right and up on top there so everything you know should be a really smooth event
Hey, it's Jay Hey, what are you talking about? Pretty boy, this man, no, fun, man. So we're going on Marshall. We just gotta make sure, you know, when cones fall down, we report it and then fix it. <laughs> what I wanna know is just you watch. Why watch, Melo? Watch it. Now do it again coming backwards. Next time I do it at the cash. For all Who's Jared? <laughs> Number 6-2-H-S 
number 788SS. Competitor number 91HS. my boys them come to support me all my boys come to support me that's what you're talking about I appreciate you guys just letting you all know from all now I appreciate you guys <laughs> all right guys so I have some explaining to do in this video like for instance the standings um, we came fourth lost to uh, Honda Grace a Mini Cooper and a Suzuki Alto which is like a small cheese cylinder turbo anyways 
those guys put on some really good driving and they put on some really good times so they deserve and they earn their spot however i feel like we could have done better if we hadn't had so many factors to deal with so some of the things that we have dealt with and are yet dealing with is for instance it had a massive exhaust leak and we have since fixed the exhaust leak but it wouldn't give us an increase in power it would more than likely give us a better torque curve and more low end torque so we'd have a little bit more aggression coming out of corners another thing that we're dealing with is that the gearbox grates at high rpm we do not think that it's the, the clutch disc or the pressure plate but we think it's more like the clutch setup like the clutch pedal and the slave and master settings so we are going through and adjusting that another thing that we were dealing with too is the fuel cut at wide open throttle which we thought was fuel slush in previous videos but as we learned in on autocross is actually an electrical issue but with all that being said those things would not have stopped us from putting out a faster time what stopped us actually was that I had a mental block because of the weld diff so a lot of people have been asking me you know how has the weld diff treated you how did it feel on track in the wet you know and honestly it it felt good it didn't it did exactly what it was supposed to do it put the power to the floor I had absolutely no issues with it whatsoever now a lot of y'all watching this might own your own drift cars and they might be well over the amount of power that this car has my drift cars so your experience would be different but for my setup personally it didn't give me any issues but I still kind of had a mental block in that I was scared to push the car to its limits because I was scared to lose control I'm not gonna lie and uh, trying to Bear in mind guys, that was the first race event that I entered into since completing the car, since it's been a working driving car. So there was things that we were trying to figure out, like for instance, um, the gearing, like how long the gears would run for, because I don't have a, a working gauge to see revs. Another thing that we were trying to figure out is the weight transfer and um, also the brakes was kind of failing on me like I think is the master giving trouble so sometimes when I mash the brakes you know I'll get immediate engagement and then sometimes I kind of have to mash and mash and mash and then it engage so it's kind of like playing roulette on the track you know <laughs> I still very much learn in the car. I've only been exposed to front wheel drive cars literally all of my driving life. So the transition hasn't been too easy on me. Not gonna lie. With that being said, we decided to not focus on first, second or third, but to break out of the 70 second bracket. On our final run, which was 68 seconds, we you know managed to beat it by break out of the bracket by two seconds. And that was a wet lap so i actually did better in the wet than in the dry simply because i said you know what whatever if i lose control i lose control you know just just send it right and that's what went on we pushed the car you know far beyond what we did before and it felt really good but it was really really sloppy and it had a lot of ways that we could have cleaned up that lap. So that's how I knew, despite all of those excuses that I made, because I know a lot of you always say it's excuses, we still, that's how I knew that we could still go faster. So this is a fresh build, as in newly running on the road. And I think, I think for me, it deserves at least a little trophy. So I wouldn't stop until at least I get one podium for the rest of the year. So I will be competing 
as as at 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 as much autocross events as I can until I get at least one trophy for Frankenstein. So some of my boys from East Sliders came to support me, watch how I was driving, see the antics, see all the wildness I was going on, and say, all right, hey, we're going like gums afterwards. So we went like gums, we did a, we had a little fun, we did a little practice, slime a little bit, and I did practice figure eights again. So video on that coming soon, right? Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I know it's a little bit different, it's not drifting, but I enjoyed the journey so far and I hope you all are too. So until next time, peace and love guys.